Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Stewart, class 2004, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Pop Nation. So I'm going to take the next five minutes or so to tell you a couple stories about getting my start in business. And first thing first, I am by no means an expert in business. In fact, quite the opposite. But that's the exciting part, because I've learned more than I ever dreamed I would over the past year and a half in business. And my hope today is that I can share a few lessons learned and stories with future entrepreneurs out there and the experienced ones. I'm sure you have tips for me too. So uh, the Pop Nation was born just under two years ago in San Francisco, California. We're a family-run operation. It's myself, my brother Tim, and then a husband and wife pair, Ann and Mark McGinty. We manufacture and sell gourmet popsicles. And our pops are special. They're vegan and gluten-free, and we source our ingredients from some of the local farms right around the corner. Our flavor list runs the gamut. So we have kid-friendly strawberry lemonade, kiwi lime and ginger, more sophisticated kind of sea salted dark chocolate, mango coconut, toasted black sesame seeds. My personal favorite, the spicy Bangkok night market. Our pops are most often sold in the streets in San Francisco. We sell out of traditional Palaita style push carts, and we also sell at events throughout the greater Bay Area from uh, Silicon Valley out to wine country and up through Sacramento. In 2012, we were in just a handful of retail locations, and 2013 is the year that we're really hoping to increase our wholesale accounts by quite a bit. So back in 2007, that's when I first moved to San Francisco. And I started to look around me, and I saw that there were people running successful businesses everywhere. And these were regular folks. These weren't people with MBAs, with corporate backgrounds. They didn't have some special training that I wasn't aware of. They were people like me and you. And I also started to notice that San Francisco, particularly, is a city that loves food. The average consumer there is very, very aware of making healthy choices and purchasing food that they're they know where it comes from. They like to be connected to the, to the local farms in the local area. We also started to learn that the vegan and particularly the gluten-free industries are growing rapidly nationwide. And we really wanted to take advantage of our location. We're situated next to some of the most fertile, agriculturally productive land in the country. So I combined all this intel with my willingness to take a risk and my lifelong dream of working in the food sector, and I was well on my way to starting a company. But starting a business takes courage. And eventually we realized that taking risks and making decisions can become the fun part. It's even addictive. I've come to thrive on constant, on-my-feet problem solving. And I know that that's a critical part to our success. So at the Pop Nation, we divide our responsibilities be between the four co-founders pretty clearly. And one of my main jobs is sourcing all the ingredients that go into our pops. Buying fruit from a grower is a completely different experience than buying other commodity goods. It's all about timing. You really never know what the price is going to be going in. You never know when it's going to be available. And the quality can vary so much from one pick to the next. So it's, it, it can be a gamble. So picture the first time ever that I'm buying kiwi fruit. I've managed to, one, find a grower, and two, get him on the phone. And that's a feat in itself. So I'm haggling with him over the price of the kiwis, and he comes in at $2 a pound. And I will say that negotiation is one of my strengths. I've talked him all the way down to 50 cents a pound. But as the, as the price is decreasing, the quantity is increasing. So I hang up the phone, and by that point, I've committed to 1,000 pounds of kiwi fruit <laughs> and that I'll pick it up that night. I have no idea how much fruit that is. I mean, not even a clue. So I hang up the phone. Oh, I'm happy, though, because this is well below the margin I was shooting for. So I hang up the phone. I go to the grocery store. I buy three kiwi fruits. I weigh them. I measure them. I multiply that out. I measure the bed of my truck. And that's that. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make here is that sometimes you have to stop thinking and start doing. You can only bat ideas around a table or do so much research before you just you need to pull the trigger. And I really believe that with the right mindset, you can make anything work. And for the record, a thousand pounds of kiwi fruit just barely fits in the back of a Tacoma. <laughs> so we know that it's important to have a solid plan in place when we're starting a company. But we also know that there's always more to learn and something else to try. And with that mindset, we're constantly adapting our business model to make improvements. 
And we're also always eager to listen to anyone and everyone who's willing to talk to us about their experience as it relates to the Pop Nation. So early on, our growth plan did focus on uh, franchising or licensing our brand. And we pictured every, people all over the U.S. owning their own Pop Nation carts, and we would be the manufacturers who supply them with the product. Um, we reached out to two key contacts early on in 2011, uh, with both of these gentlemen had years and years of business franchise experience. One is the founder of Jiffy Lube, and the other is a Colgate alum uh, who also coincidentally founded another lube company who has franchises all over the New England and tri-state area, Paul John Ferry. So on top of some really valuable v business and franchising information from both of these individuals, um, we also received heavy caution from one of them about jumping into franchising, particularly in California, where the regulations are incredibly strict and the law always seems to fa favor the franchisee. So we did a little bit more research on our own and we decided that the first couple of years in business, we'd actually hold off on our franchising plans. And we'd focus on direct sales and wholesale. But to hedge our bets, we didn't take down the Own a Pop Nation uh, page from our website. And within our first three months in business, and some of these came in before we had sold a single Popsicle, we had over 50 inquiries, serious ones, people looking to franchise. So we know that if and when the time is right, the interest is certainly there. Okay, so I've told you that one, we're not experts in business. Two, we're doing a lot of on our feet problem solving, learning as we go. And three, we're adapting our business model to sort of make improvements as we learn things along the way. So knowing this, you can imagine that not everything has gone perfectly. And my feeling toward missteps is this. As long as you never make the same mistake twice and you walk away with some new knowledge, you're going to improve. So I want to tell you about the first mistake I made. And that was early on, and it cost us a big account. Well, we never actually had the account, so it was a potential account. I had been trying for months to get a meeting with the buyer for UC Davis, which is a big school in California. It's about uh, maybe 30,000 people. Um, so I finally got my foot in the door. And I just pitched way too early. I should have gone in there and been pitching pallets of pops arriving on 18-wheelers, minimum orders that could supply a stadium. And instead, I went in there pitching cases of pops delivered by me. Um, probably could fill a small chest freezer. And I had this sales flyer that I had created on my computer. It's embarrassing to think about now. It was so text heavy. And it was just everything about that meeting just screamed inexperience. So we left that meeting. We didn't get that account. Um, and we decided from there that we would sort of first approach some of these smaller retailers in our local area where we could kind of test the waters. And we did that. And we had a lot of success with those in the beginning. And of course, when some of the larger companies approached us, we listened. Who knows, maybe this year. Well, 2013 is the year, actually. We now, we now feel ready. We've been in business about a year and a half now, and we feel ready to start approaching some of those larger companies. Um, and if UC Davis is ready to take another meeting with me, this time I will be ready. So um, hopefully you've been able to take away some points from my story. M m m excuse me, I mainly focused on uh, some of the lessons learned and some of the things that we've come across in our first year in business. Um, it's been challenging, that's for sure, and sometimes it seems impossible. But I haven't done anything in my life to date that's been more rewarding than building the Pop Nation. And I want to mention one more thing before I go. I've been out of school now nine years, and it seems like since I left Colgate. The longer I'm out of school, the more exceptional, the more I see how exceptional Colgate people are. And I guess I just want to tell you all, Take advantage of that and leverage that, Colgate, leverage that Colgate advantage because it definitely goes a long way out there in the world. Thank you. Nice work.